Hello everyone, and in today's video, we're going to be discussing a new AI model from China, but not from DeepSeek this time. This is one developed by a company called Moonshot AI, and the specific model we're going to be looking at is Kimi Kimi 1.5. So if we look at the features of this model, we can see that it's an O1 level multimodal model, which means that it has reasoning abilities similar to OpenAI's O1 model, but it's also a multimodal model, which means that it can process images and it can analyze and reason with images as well, which we'll see when we practically test the model. And if we look at the key features of Kimi 1.5, we can see that you can use the model completely for free with no usage limits. You have web search capabilities across over 100 plus websites. You can upload multiple files at once, and it says you can upload up to 50 files, but we'll see that's not always entirely the case. It has advanced reasoning capabilities and uses chain of thought reasoning, and it has enhanced image analysis feature. We'll see how it's capable of really analyzing complex images. And you have a feature called set the common phrase, which I'll show you how to use as well. And you can access this model at kimi.ai. And I'll leave you the link to this in the description below. So if we have a quick look at the benchmarks, we can see that Kimi 1.5 does better on both maths tests, the Amy 2024 and the Maths 500. We can see that in coding, it's similar to OpenAI's model and is slightly lower than the live code bench version 5. And we can see that in vision does better on the maths vista tests than open ai but slightly lower in the mmu test and these are actually quite amazing results for an ai model that is literally a year old so in this video we're going to be practically testing this model to see whether it actually lives up to these benchmarks so let's get started so in order to get started with kimmy what you need to do is you need to log in and it will ask you to actually sign up with the phone number so you just go and enter your code and then your number and what they'll do is they'll send you a verification code i actually got mine on whatsapp and then once you've got that you can log in and once you're logged in this is the interface that you're going to see so we have here on the side the home page we have here the ability to start a new chat we've got here the version of our chat history and then you've also got desktop versions and the browser extensions very simple interface you just enter your prompt here and what you have here is the two models so you've got the original Kimi model and you've also got the Kimi 1.5 long thinking which does the complex visual and text reasoning and this is the model that we're going to be focusing on today the other thing to know about the interface is that it has web search so I can choose to have this offline if I don't want it to focus on web searching or I can activate it if I'm using web search and what you'll see here is that you've got the option also to add something called common phrase and if you've noticed in my previous videos there's something that I always say which is summarize and provide me with the key insights and what i can do is that i can actually come here i can enter the prompt that i always use which is summarize this and provide key insights okay and i'm then i'm just gonna say new and then what you'll see is that now it's added a key insights summary which is the name of my common phrase. And that prompt is summarize this and provide key insights. So what I can do is instead of writing it out every single time, I can just click on that and then it will know to use that prompt. So I really like this common phrase feature. It's, it's not something that I've seen in any of the previous AI models. So quite a nice feature to have to be able to store your library of prompts in the model itself. And it just facilitates the process. So the other thing we have is we can upload files. Like it says, you can upload a maximum 50 files. Does it really take 50 files? We'll see that with the testing. So let's get started with the first prompt. And the first thing I want to look at, because this is a multimodal model and it's placed a lot of emphasis on its ability to read visuals and images, I'm going to start off with uploading my image and see how it analyzes and extracts information from that image. Okay, so I've uploaded my image here and what I'm going to say is analyze this image and explain it. And because I don't want it to search the web, I'm just going to deactivate the online button and I'm going to enter that. Okay, and you can see that now it's going through the process of reasoning, it's trying to extract the information from the image. Okay, and you can see that it's come back now with the output. You can see that the explanation is divided into well-defined sections, easy to follow the components and the processes. And what I really like is that when I click on the image, it opens up here on the side. So while I'm reading the information, I can actually follow through with the image. What I also really like about this is the visual process that it's followed. So it's taking each part and it's explained it quite accurately. So you've got the edge nodes, the autoencoder, and it's followed a very logical process in explaining these. It's 
provided the key features as well at the end. Let's just explain these concepts in a very simple, easy to understand manner. So it's done a really good job with uh, this initial analysis of this image. So one last prompt with problem solving with images to show you how it does with other spatial reasoning problems. And this is a spatial reasoning problem, which says choose the shape that could be the result if these two shapes were combined and no other changes were made. So I'm going to enter that. And you can see that once the reasoning is completed, it tells us what it's done. So it starts by analyzing these two shapes. The left shape is a cube, missing a small cube and so on. And it explains the reasoning and says the correct answer is B. And that is the correct answer that you get when you combine these two shapes together. So this feature of combining this ability to read images with problem solving is a really powerful ability that we're now getting with the Kimi 1.5. Okay, so for the next feature, we're going to be looking at its web search. And to do this, we're going to activate connection to the internet. You can see it now says connected the internet. Kimi will collect information through the internet when needed. And I'm going to add a prompt that says, find me the latest statistics on AI usage. Okay, and you can immediately see that it's now searching and reasoning. And it opens a side panel that starts to explore the latest sources. And once it's done, it says it's read 13 pages, statistics across sectors. And if I click on that, it will take me through the reasoning process of how which sites is decided to explore and the titles of these sites. And then it talks about how it's going to organize the information. It talks about some things that it's noticed as well. This has been mentioned in some of the sources. And then it says, as I go through the data, I see some recurring themes like the rapid growth of generative AI. And if you look at it, similar to the thought process that you would go through if you were actually conducting that search and trying to figure out what are the best statistics to use. You'd look at this website, you'd say, let me group these statistics into specific categories. And it's actually done that process for you. And then what it's done, which I really like, is that it's now given me the results organized by categories. They're concise. They're to the point. I've got the organized headings here, like market size and growth. It says the global AI market is valued at, and then it gives me the source. So actually it's gone beyond why I asked it, which is about AI usage. It's first introduced the overall broad theme of what the market is like. And then it starts to talk about the adoption rates and it says between 50% and 60% of all organizations are using AI. And if I click on that, it's taking me to the reference, which is the key AI statistics everyone should know. And if I go to that web page, then I can check the actual statistics and I can see that on the web page itself is 50% to 60% of all organizations are using AI. And this is a really nice way if you're looking for sources or statistics on any specific topic that you can just access that really quickly and you know it's quite accurate as well. So if we look at the rest of the output, you can see industry specific usage, it talks about consumer usage, impact on jobs, usage in specific areas, and you can see that it's used an extensive number of sites. Here you've got a total of 19 references that I can go through and check. It's done an amazing job with this and what I really like is also the layout of how it's organized, the logical structure of how it's organized the output. So we've seen how it brings back accurate information. I also want to test its ability to find the most recent information. And I'm going to add another prompt here that says, what is the latest price of Apple stock? And you can see again, that it's searching and reasoning. It's read 24 pages. Again, it's giving me the thought process, it comes back with the web search results. Okay. And it says the latest price of Apple stock is $239 as of the close on January 29th. Again, for a bit of context, today is the 30th of January. So it's about a day old in terms of extracting the information. And if I click on the source that it's used, it will take me to the page. I can see the latest Apple stock, which is $239 as of January 29th. I mean, it could have extracted something that was a bit more recent. It could have tried to find latest web pages of information that is available today, but a day old is still not bad. So a great job with web search. Probably if I wanted something that is more real-time information, I would not use Kimi 1.5, but just bear that in mind that it is quite recent, but it's not giving you um, the latest web search or the latest results as you'd get immediately right now. The next thing I'm going to be looking at is its ability to upload documents. So I've now added 10 documents to see whether it will take all these documents and be able to summarize them. So we've added 10 documents here, but as you can see, it just says Kimmy can only read 55% of all files. Please reduce and send again. So I'm just going to delete a few documents here. 
So now you can see it's capable of taking about six documents. I'm just going to remove the online feature because I want it to focus on the actual documents that I've attached. So now it's offline. And I'm actually going to come to the common phrase here, which I have entered because I want it to summarize these documents and provide me with the key insights. So I'm just going to add this one, summarize and provide with key insights. Then you can see that it's now added that prompt that has been stored in my library. And I'm now going to enter that. Okay, so you can see that it's now come back with the output. It says the reasoning is completed. It's summarized AI in healthcare literature, starting on the first document. It's analyzed the core content and so on. And then it gives me a bit of an overview of the uploaded files consist of several research papers and reports, detailed the applications, the challenges, and the future prospects of AI in healthcare. It actually synthesizes a short summary of what these documents are about. They explore various aspects of AI implementation, including the various features, and they also discuss the ethical considerations. And I just appreciate the extent of the answer as well. See that it's come back with six files organized with a conclusion at the end. And now if we look at the actual content, you'll find that for each article, it starts off with the name of the article, it tells me what the article is reviewing, it gives me a bit of research background on the article, it gives me some headings that tackle the main input in the article. So a really well-structured summary. But not only that, it actually gives me a conclusion at the end as well, and it focuses on the key findings and future directions in each one. So quite a lot of analysis that has been done here. So I hope you found it useful and I'll see you in the next video.